Hey Optimancers, Chris here. So if you were to look through all the builds on this channel, there would be a few weapons you wouldn't see in use. And one of them is the net. But is the net ever worth it? The net is easily the most complicated weapon in the player's handbook, likely in the game. In today's video, I'm going to go through the mechanics of this weapon, and I'll do some analysis to determine if it's ever worth using. If you would like to support this content, please click the link in the video description to go to my Patreon. Patrons of this channel see these videos early and non-monetized, and my top-level patrons can join me to play some D&D every month. Today, I would like to recognize these patrons. Rohit, Ryan Squire, Safes, Sajon Abraham, Scott Ballantyne, Scott Dunnington, and Scott J. Smith. Thank you all so much for your support. Let's get started. So let's look at the net. First, it's considered a ranged martial weapon. That means, first off, you should probably have martial weapon proficiency if you're going to use it. Second thing we're going to notice is it's a one gold piece cost. That means this is an easy purchase for even a starting first level character. It has the special and thrown properties with a range of 5 feet short range and 15 feet long range. And finally, and probably most importantly, it does not do damage. Now if we were to look at the special property of the net, we see a large or smaller creature hit by a net is restrained. If we look at the restrained condition, it provides three penalties to the creature. Firstly, its speed becomes zero. Secondly, attacks against the creature have advantage, and the creature has disadvantage on attacks. So that's kind of two penalties in one. And thirdly, the creature has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. So that's, you know, that's pretty darn good, especially something that potentially we could set up right from first level. So why isn't everyone using a net? Except there is more to this story. The net has no effect on a creature huge or larger or a creature immune to the restrained condition, though most creatures don't fit in either of those categories. A creature can also use its action to make a DC 10 strength check freeing itself or another creature within reach on a success, or dealing 5 slashing damage to the net with an armor class of 10 also frees the creature and destroys the net. So DC 10 is an easy check. 5 damage, easy to do. Armor class of 10 is a terrible armor class. So all the little mechanics here suggest it's pretty easy to get out of a net. Then we have the kicker. When you use an action, bonus action, or reaction to attack with the net, you can only make one attack. Now the wording there is a bit confusing, but what it means is that if you can normally make more than one attack by any of these individual actions, you can only make the net attack. So if for some reason we could say attack with both our action and bonus action, then we could use one to throw the net and the other to attack. So this is definitely a significant limitation, but it's not necessarily insurmountable. And the reason we would want to do that is because if we can throw a net on something and then it's restrained, then we would get advantage on any following attacks. So although we're investing that initial attack that's doing no damage, every attack afterwards on average will do more damage. So if we go back to the weapon stats, we also see the thrown property. Now, if the weapon was a melee weapon, then we could use the same ability score we use for melee attacks to apply to the thrown weapon. But since the net is a ranged weapon, we use dexterity. And on its own, the thrown property doesn't change any mechanics, though it does alter how it interacts with some other features of the game. And we'll see an example of that later on. The next issue, though, then comes into play with range. And this is a huge issue, and probably the reason why we don't see a lot of nets. Because if we're within 5 feet of an enemy and make a ranged attack, and a net is always considered a ranged attack because it's a ranged weapon, that attack has disadvantage if we're within 5 feet. And our short range limit is 5 feet. 
That means, with a net, we have disadvantage due to using a ranged weapon next to an enemy if we're within 5 feet, and disadvantage due to range if we're more than 5 feet. So, we always have disadvantage on the attack roll. And so, if we're going to make an attack with it, and likely miss, then we're basically giving up that attack for nothing. So, it uses dexterity to attack. There's a couple ways around that, but... Generally speaking, if we want to use the restrain condition through the net to get advantage on attacks, we're likely going to be using ranged or finesse weapons. Then we have disadvantage on the attack to set up restraint in the first place, and then we have a creature that has a good chance to free itself, meaning on our next turn we likely won't be looking at a restrained target anymore, and finally we need to make an attack with the net, and we can't take any additional attacks with that action, bonus action, or reaction. And setting up a bonus action or reaction to use on the net requires some planning because normally you can't do that. So there are a lot of hoops to go through and that's probably why we don't see a lot of nets in use. So then the question is, is there any point in using a net? It's likely going to miss, uses up our attack, and does no damage if it hits, and it isn't easy to use. Well, let's go through a little bit about what works and what doesn't to get around these problems. The first, let's talk about what doesn't work. There is no way to do damage with the net. And if you've read otherwise online somewhere that you might use the thrown weapon fighting style or smite or sneak attack to do damage with a net, it really doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because a net doesn't do zero damage. If a net did zero damage, zero is something that you could modify. But a net doesn't do damage at all. And I know those sound very similar, but they're different. Now you might ask, what is the difference? And that is a fair question. And frankly, it's, it's a little vague in the rules. I'm just taking the word of the designers that the intent is that when something does no damage, you can't add to it because there's no damage. And it's kind of interesting because I'll go to D&D Beyond and they'll have a stat page for the net and they show zero bludgeoning damage. So they've given it a damage type and they've told that it has damage of zero. But that's not what's printed in the player's handbook. In the player's handbook, it's blank. So obviously D&D Beyond has changed it and I haven't been aware of any errata for it to change. And if there is no errata and there's a difference between D&D Beyond player's handbook's what's official. As for the action, bonus action or reaction required for the net, the action is the most expensive since we can get additional attacks with our action and we would lose them. However, there are a couple ways we might use our bonus action or reaction to throw the net. The first is the quick toss maneuver through Battlemaster. Remember, there are a couple other ways to access this. You could use the superior technique fighting style or the martial adept feat. But those are both expensive ways to access the maneuver because they can only be used once per rest instead of three times. So Battlemaster is probably the most efficient way to get Quick Toss. Now the Quick Toss maneuver allows you to spend one of your superiority dice to make a ranged attack with a thrown property weapon. Net has the thrown property. It also normally adds a superiority die to the damage, but it, as we already discussed, you're not going to get to add anything to damage that doesn't exist. So you would lose out on that if you throw the net with Quick Toss. The second way you might do it is with the War Cleric's level 1 feature, War Priest. War Priest allows you to make one weapon attack as a bonus action when you use the attack action a number of times equal to your Wisdom modifier per long rest. Now the issue with using War Priest is the bonus action attack comes after the attack action is used. Though technically, if you had extra attack, you could attack once with your action, and that technically is using the attack action. So now you could use your bonus action to throw a net, and then you could use your second attack from your attack action afterwards, hopefully with advantage from the creature being restrained. There are some other ways to use your bonus action to attack with a net, but they require big investments in levels. If there's another way to do it easily, I don't know what it is. Now, what about using your reaction? This one is harder. The net is a ranged weapon, so it doesn't qualify for opportunity attacks at all. That means you need to make a reaction attack granted some other way, 
for which you could make a net attack. And a couple examples I found, you could be an order cleric using voice of authority, or battlemaster fighter could use commander strike. Either of those provide a reaction attack that doesn't need to be melee. So there are ways to do it, but they require basically a different party member to get involved. So ways to get around the lost attack through extra attack, that's not easy to work around, but it's not impossible. But what about the disadvantage to hit? Because if we miss, the whole point is lost anyway. Well, first off, you can cancel disadvantage with advantage. So if you got the help action, or you attack from hidden, or use a Zephyr Strike, or any of the other countless ways to gain advantage, you can make a straight up attack. There's two reasons I'm not a fan of doing this. The first is that instead of an attack with advantage, you're getting a straight up attack. So you're losing the advantage. The second is there's no way to get advantage on that net attack because if you have at least one case of disadvantage and at least one case of advantage, you have a straight up roll no matter how many times they pile up on either side. So another possibility is if we could just remove the disadvantage in the first place. And there's two ways we can do this. The first is we could take a feat that allows us to use a ranged weapon in melee without disadvantage. And both the crossbow expert and gunner feats allow us to do that. And the second is to take a feat that allows us to attack at long range without disadvantage. And that's the sharpshooter feat. So if we apply any of these methods, then grant advantage through, say, the help action, for example, we could make our net attack with advantage. So I like those methods a little bit more. Finally, we could just get a big bonus to hit. Even with disadvantage, a bonus to hit still improves our odds. So there's a few ways to add small amounts. You could get the archery combat style, and that immediately gets you an easy plus two. And yeah, it's kind of strange you need to take the archery combat style instead of the thrown weapon fighting combat style, because the thrown weapon fighting combat style doesn't really do much for you. Since we lose the damage bonus, archery is the one you want. An artificer might make the net a plus one or plus two net, for example, as well. But again, we should note that we would lose out on the damage bonus that that would normally provide. The biggest one I notice is the level two war cleric channel divinity option, Guided Strike. That adds plus 10 to hit. Even with disadvantage, if you add an additional plus 10 to hit, unless you roll a natural one on either of those d20s, which is about a 10% chance, with an additional plus 10, we can probably hit most creatures. Let's say, for example, we rolled a two and our base chance to hit is plus seven with another plus 10. We're all the way up to 19, enough to hit most creatures. And we could get that plus seven plus three decks plus two proficiency bonus, plus two archery combat style. Now, another way I thought we might get a bonus to hit is the Battlemaster's Precision Strike, but we can only use one maneuver per attack. So if we're using Quick Toss to throw the net, we can't use Precision Strike on top of that. Now, there are a couple of ways to cancel the disadvantage, or remove it and replace it with advantage, or just boost the attack roll to get the hit. But why would we want to go through all that trouble? Well, first and most obviously, if we use our bonus action to create the restraint condition, we can now attack with advantage with our action. But we do get some other advantages though. Remember the dexterity save disadvantage? So let's say we use quick toss and catch something in the net, and then we follow that up by a spell that provides a dexterity save. That spell has a better chance of working. So let's say we use our bonus action and net the enemy, then the wizard could throw an Autoluke's Resilient Sphere, and that enemy now has disadvantage to save against it. And although the enemy might be able to escape our net easily enough, escaping the sphere, that's not so easy. Disintegrate pops out too. That's a spell that does around 75 points of damage if the creature fails their dexterity saving throw, or zero damage if they succeed. So there's a lot of investment in them failing that saving throw. Disadvantage is a good way to make that more likely. And I mean, ultimately, the wizard might even, on their own, have the way to throw that net with the bonus action. Probably not. But it could be done, potentially. Probably not something I'd recommend. Or it could just be combined with a restrained effect that's more difficult to escape, like a web spell. And remember, when you cast a web spell, the creature doesn't make their dexterity save right away. They make their dexterity save on their turn. So the wizard might have cast a web spell, then you throw a net on the creature that's about to make their save, and now they're restrained for that saving throw. 
And then once they're restrained in the web, that is not so easy to get out of. But let's say for a second that we didn't combine it with any other restrained ability and the enemy starts their turn caught in a net. How likely are they to escape? Well, if they use their action, they need to make a DC 10 strength check. That is not a hard check, but it's not an automatic check either. Legendary resistance is for saving throws, so it can't be used. Unless a creature has a 28 or greater strength, there is at least a chance of failure. But still, most creatures should have a decent chance of escape. But if they do, then just remember they did use their action to escape. So it doesn't matter if they have multi-attack, they get no attacks after that. The other option is to do damage to the net. So hitting the net is easy enough. Armor class of 10. I mean, even if I'm restrained with disadvantage, I would still probably expect to hit it. And five points of slashing damage should be pretty easy if a creature does slashing damage. Because apparently only slashing damage works. Lots of creatures in the game do bludgeoning or piercing or elemental damage, and none of those work to destroy the net. So if a creature does slashing damage, can probably get out very easily using a single attack. But if it doesn't do slashing damage, then it's probably going to have to use its action to escape, in which case it's not going to be attacking anybody that turn. But is a creature likely to escape? Yes. But it is far from certain, unless a creature is very, very strong or does slashing damage. If not, there is still a fair chance they may remain restrained, and even if they break free, they've lost their action to do so, unless they can deliver the slashing damage, in which case, at least they lost an attack. So setting up some advantage attacks with your attack action by using your bonus action to throw the net is one possibility, but you are getting more than that. Still, just for the attacks on your turn alone, is this worth it? Let's look at a little bit of math and take a look at an example. So in this case, we have a fighter level six, battle master, ranger level three, gloom stalker. Uh, we'll be very human and we'll have sharpshooter and a 20 dexterity. Then we add the archery combat style for plus two to hit. So what we would do is use our bonus action for the quick toss maneuver and throw the net. Now we can't use precision strike, so we're looking at about 70% chance to hit, zero damage, but restraints. Now in this case, because we're using the sharpshooter feet, we're looking for a range of 10 or 15 feet to make the attack without disadvantage. But it's certainly possible you could have advantage on the attack, but for the purpose of this example, we'll assume no advantage. Basically, we have 70% chance of having advantage on all further attacks that turn. And we're assuming this is the first round of combat. So with Sharpshooter, our normal chance to hit, I would estimate at 35%, but it would become 45% because of the archery combat style. And if we got advantage on there, it would be 70% chance to hit. And so if we have a 70% chance of restraining them, then what we're really ending up with is an average of about 62.5% chance to hit. Now the base damage for the attack, if we're using a longbow, would be 19.5 damage, 4.5 from the base longbow, 5 from our dexterity, 10 from sharpshooter. And on that first round we would follow up restraining the enemy with 6 longbow attacks with sharpshooter. How do we achieve 6 attacks? Well, we have extra attack through fighter, so our attack action normally includes 2, but because we have gloomstalker 3, we get Dread Ambusher, which gives us an additional attack when we take the attack action on the first round of combat. So now we have three, then we use our action surge, and we do it again. And Dread Ambusher does apply again because it's still the first round of combat, and we are still using an attack action to make an attack. So we end up with six longbow attacks, and if we look and have a 62.5% chance to hit with 19.5 average damage, that's 12.2 per arrow. Critical damage be about another 0.36 per arrow. So one arrow is doing an average of 12.56. Six arrows, 75.4. Then because we're a ranger and favored foe does not require a bonus action, we can use favored foe at another 2.5. 
you have to hit at least once to be able to add your favored foe but in this case because we're making so many attacks our chance to hit at least once it's over 99 percent so we essentially we're adding 2.5 so our total average damage using the quick toss net method combined with loom stalker again this is just the first round of combat and it's using our resources 77.9 damage on average so that's decent for a ninth level character but what if we didn't use a net how does it compare well let's say maybe we did the same build in terms of ranger versus fighter except instead of doing battle master because we're not using a net we're going to use echo then we could use unleash incarnation twice with great sword and great weapon master and then we could actually have our bonus action still available for a hunter's mark and so you could hunter's mark an enemy with your bonus action then your initial attack action two base attacks plus one for dread ambusher plus one from unleash incarnation then we action surge and get two base attacks plus one for dread ambusher another plus one from unleash incarnation and now we can do eight attacks now if we have advantage for some reason on this it does a ton of damage but we didn't throw a net so i'm not going to assume advantage and so we're really looking at a 35 percent chance to hit now you throw two levels of barbarian on there and reckless attack you can do a ton of damage with this but as it is with a 35 percent chance to hit it ends up being a total of 75.4 damage which is less than using the net and the difference is that chance to hit that the net provides makes a big difference but there are other ways to get advantage here's a simple way instead of using battle master we use samurai and then we have fighting spirit well fighting spirit allows us to use our bonus action to set up advantage for the rest of our turn and we can still get the gloom stalker extra attack so we can still make six attacks on our turn all with advantage except unlike with the net there's no chance to miss the advantage is automatic so we have a 70 percent chance to hit on each of those attacks so obviously that's more damage in this case about 87.1 now there are a lot of builds you could make that take advantage of using a net uh, the one I presented here is just an example that takes advantage of making lots of attacks after the net is thrown so you get the biggest bang from your buck from that restrained condition but what we see is is it worth throwing the net just for the advantage on attacks and I would say no because it looks like there are other ways we can do more damage and get that advantage in other ways and there is a lot that goes into setting up the net attack because we have to deal with the bonus action setup but then also with the disadvantage on the attack and we can do that but when we do there is the opportunity cost to set up the other things that might have given us more attacks or more damage or maybe advantage on those attacks anyways I mean I just scratched on the surface the ways we might get advantage as a gloom stalker we might have had advantage on all those attacks anyways if a creature was relying on dark vision to see us but if we consider the advantages of the enemy being restrained beyond just our attack action well then it might be worthwhile we are hindering the enemy to at least some degree on their turn and we may set up allies for either attacks of their own or dexterity saving throw spells so once you take that all into account we may have a decent build on our hands it kind of depends on your priorities if it's just straight damage you're concerned about I think there are better ways to do it but if you were hoping to get a little bit of control built in to mix with that damage this might be viable whether you consider the net for your next character or not at least you know now how to set up a lot of attacks with your attack actions on the first turn of combat with gloomstalker and echo knight so hopefully you learned something or at least were entertained otherwise until next time i'm going to sit back relax and have some fun D, D is for everyone thanks everybody and i'll talk to you soon